and as an x-ray tech in like 1981 and that's what I'd gone to school for and so I did that for about 10 years here and then I decided maybe I wanted to expand my horizons a little bit and I went back to Mount Mercy and got a degree in um, business administration and then at that time that was probably about the time when Mike was coming back or actually he had been hired and he came back and they made him administrator so he kind of took his job and split it in two and Julie Meadows did the CFO part and I was doing um, at the time I still was doing x-ray but I just started in purchasing and then I did some of the contracts and then from there I don't know and then I decided that I guess a BA wasn't good enough so then I went back and got my masters <laughs> and um, yeah and then just kept he just kept giving me more more things to do. Um, I supervise now all the most of the ancillary departments that do outpatient services um, and inpatient but lab x-ray um, therapy and dietary since they're just down the hall and safety. So quite a lot. Yeah, somebody kind of described it to me. She'd already, already be doing a lot of it anyway. <laughs> yeah. What about that do you like? What do I like? Um, I like that every day can be different. Uh, I like getting out and um, talking with other people in the hospital, working with all the other departments. Um, as safety committee or safety committee and as safety director a lot of times I would do in services and would go out to like our clinics and I really enjoyed that seeing the people that work out there that you don't see on a day-to-day -day basis you talk to them on the phone but you never see their face um, I like that what don't you like what don't I like um, sometimes I don't like the politics in healthcare. I don't like how we can't, um, how between the government and insurance, I mean, I've seen, I've seen it all, the, the whole gamut, how much they tell us and the physician how they can treat the patient, what kind of tests you can do, what they're going to pay for, and that I think it's gotten... There, there's going to be changes coming, I'm sure. That's kind of my next adventure. Nothing ever stays the same in healthier care. You're going to have to look. Everybody has, it's going to high deductible insurance plans because insurance has covered everything and now people are living longer. And so we're going to have to make a decision of where that money's going to come from. Is that going to be your biggest challenge in the foreseeable future? That and getting care, I think, accessible to the um, generations that are coming up. Now they're saying the baby boomers are, aren't are quite the um, most populous generation they have been, that the millennials and the others are coming up. So we're going to have to adjust some of the traditional... traditional methods, the way we've offered care. Um, I went to meetings for the Iowa Hospital Association last week and I, I should have looked at that percentage of the um, people that don't, they don't even have a primary care physician. You know, they'll go, they'll just go where it's most convenient. So you're going to have to market to a different, a different uh, demographic. Isn't change the only constant? Yeah. <laughs> How much maybe I that's and maybe that's what makes me go. I don't know. Yeah, because it's always it's there's always something changing, and I think that's what a lot of people hear. They know that, and they go with it and do what they can because they like what they do. They they like providing that care, so they'll do what they have to to provide it. How much has it changed in? Uh your decades here? In my decades here, when I first started here, 
um, I was in the x-ray. There was two of us in the x-ray department. Um, I took call every night during the week. Uh, never usually got called out. That was back in the time when the doctors would either have people come back the next day to be seen or you could just stick them in the hospital and do all their testing in the morning. Now you have to do it before you can even stick them in the hospital. That's not a very good word, stick, but <laughs> you can admit them to the hospital. Yeah, that's, that's the biggest difference. And then I think the other thing too though is, and this is just my opinion, people didn't used to go to the doctor like they go to now. I don't know if you can remember growing up. I mean, my mom, I remember my sister had her arm broke for a week before my mom took her to the doctor because it's like, you know, oh, I guess you did do something to it. People didn't want that instant thing. It was like, oh, well, wait a while, you'll get better. Or, you know, but now everybody, I think we've gotten used to that. We want stuff and we want it now. So. The McDonald's syndrome. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. What do you think will be the biggest, and I'm kind of re, re going over a ground here, but what's going kind to of the biggest change you see in Virginia Gay Hospital? Say the next five, ten years. That's hard to say. Something uh, physical plant wise or program wise? Probably more program wise. Um, plant wise I think we're pretty much set. Um, of course you can always look at um, long term care, I mean we have our model that we have, that might be something that we want to look at in the future, um, adding to that. Uh, one of the things they're looking at, we've always been um, blessed with the community of getting support so anything we want to do, I think we're going to do more, uh, we're looking at more uh, mental health, uh, we did hire a uh, nurse practitioner to start doing um, seeing some mental health patients I don't really want to say me mental health because then psychiatrists will get mad um, to see to maybe counsel some people with problems I think I I'm gonna see us do more preventive care uh, maybe more diabetic training, um, more diet training, more obesity, looking at how we can prevent some of the illnesses that are that are costing us so much now. Whether that's just ourselves or as a community, you know, working with others in the community to do that. What was it like working with Mike? What was it like working with Mike? Um, pretty easy. Mike, uh, Mike's military kind of all the way. He always knew where he stood with Mike. I mean, you know, and Mike was always fair. Uh, he kind of told you what he wanted. Uh, I don't know. I was, I had some good times with him. He was a good mentor for me and, um, helping me to expand in different things. And he did listen to, Mike always listened to both sides of the story. Um, you know, he didn't come from a healthcare background, and he'll tell you he didn't come from a clinical background, so that was something he had to learn on the job, and, and he's pretty much a numbers guy. He'll, <laughs> um, you talk to him a little bit, but he is really a, a numbers guy, um, and so yeah, I think the combina combination of him with that just a, a right combination of numbers with the clinical um, expertise got us got us through. How would you describe yourself? Um, probably a little bit more clinical. I have a clinical background. I do have a business background. I'll be honest with you. I will do accounting, but I don't don't want to become an accountant, and that's why I did I didn't go any further than that. I'd rather be uh, with the people. Uh, doing, um, I think doing more, relating more, 
um, but of course, always looking at the at the cost conscious part of it. We have to, you know, balance out what we do to make sure that. And I don't really even like saying profit because it makes it sound like um, you're out there. But that's what we're here for. If we don't make some kind of profit, we can't pay for our facility. We can't pay for our supplies. We can't pay, pay our employees. So we have to be in some sense profitable. Um, and I think we've always done a, done a good job. Um, we're not terribly extravagant. We have very talented people, good ideas that um, I think we work well together. Cool. Cool. Yeah. That's my old 60s word, man. Cool. Uh, anything that we haven't touched on that we should? I don't know. I, I guess I am excited. I didn't, you know, when Mike said he was leaving, I really wasn't sure what was going to happen. I, and I think everybody and, um, and I hadn't really thought about applying for his job and I did. So I'm kind of excited to get on to the, the next step. It's going to be different. You know, it's going to be a change, but, um, I've had a lot of good comments and support from people here at work and in the community so I think we can carry on it will be different with Mike without Mike but I think we can do it okay well Michelle I appreciate it very much okay so